morning, everyone. My name is Chen Li. Uh, before I start, I would like to acknowledge the co-authors of this um, paper, Dr. Simon Benson and Professor Zhi Hu. They are also the um, supervisors of my PhD study. My talk today is mainly about the um, st structural strength assessment um, of a damaged ship, the ultimate strength performance of a damaged container ship. This is the plan of my presentation. I will talk about the motivation, aim, and objectives of the study. <laughs> and then I will show you the uh, case study container ship model. I will um, briefly introduce the model characteristics and the damage scenarios that I analyzed. And then I will uh, describe the methodology that uh, we used to calculate the um, ultimate strength of a ship hull, uh, in particular, the simplified progressive collapse method. And as we validated some of, some of our results using the um, nonlinear finding element method, so I will also show you the um, usual uh, finding element model, modeling techniques that we, we adopt. And of course, I will show you the uh, results and um, discuss the insights that we developed from, from the study. Uh, and finally, I will draw the conclusions highlighting the key findings from this research. First is the motivation. Um, nowadays, the, the, the ships, the container ships, are, are the sizes of a container ship is growing larger and larger because we can have different economic benef benefits by constructing a larger ship. In the same time, uh, there's an increase of the concern of the safety of the ship because they are growing larger and larger. Um, now, when we design a new ship, we mean not not only consider the, um, the, the structural strength in an intact condition, but also in in extend it to some damage scenarios in order to uh, minimize the post-damage risk in order to have a safer um, design of our ship for our ship. Um, there are plenty of works uh, in the literature uh, to investigate the residual ultimate strength uh, of a ship, but most of them were completed for bulk carriers and oil tankers. But as we all know, the, uh, there's a very large difference in terms of the structural configuration between these um, ship types. Uh, recently, there is some research uh, to investigate the residual strength of a grounded container ship, container ship um, in grounding, but very little on uh, the residual strength of container ship having some side shell damage. So with, that, with this motivation, the aim of our study is to investigate the ultimate strength performance of a container ship under different sideshell damage scenarios, and also to propose some efficient design methods that allows us to make a very quick assessment of the residual strength of a container ship. Specifically, we have four objectives. First, we will perform a parametric analysis uh, to calculate the uh, residual ultimate strength of uh, the container ship under different damage scenarios using the um, simplified progressive collapse method, or um, its other name is Smith method. And we will validate some of our uh, simplified calculation using the nonlinear finding element analysis. We will also evaluate the safety mar mar margin of the ship with reference to some of the hydrostatic and hydrodynamic results that are conducted by my colleague. And uh, finally, we will try to develop some residual strength uh, index diagrams, which could be some uh, efficient ways to make a um, assessment of the residual strength of container ship for a given damage scenario. This is our case study model, a container ship model. It is, uh, uh, this is our, we, we in our paper, in the appendix of um, the paper, we, I, I, I provide uh, a detailed uh, cross-section uh, and the scandalings of this cross-section in the appendix of the paper, uh, hopefully it can. And in case three, the damage zone is propagated from the lower deck of the side shell, also with a damage extent uh, varying from 10 percent to 70 percent. So in total we have 8 plus 7 plus 7 
23 damage scenarios that we will be analyzing. And now I will uh, introduce the analysis method we use to calculate the ultimate strength. Uh, in the past 40 years, there are plenty of methodology uh, being developed to, um, to, to predict the ultimate strength. strength. Empirical formula, presume stress distribution method, <laughs> and the idealized structural union method being developed in, mainly in Japan and Korea. And the simplified progressive class method, or SIMIT method. And the final one is the numerical method, nonlinear finite element method, which is very computational um, expensive. Because we, I will only use these uh, two methods for the analysis, so I will only focus on the introduction to these two methods. Here's the little background about the simplified progressive class method. It was originally proposed by Smith in the 1970s to predict the ultimate help strength under vertical bending. And uh, throughout the years, now it has been, the, its capability is now extended to deal with biaxial bending, to deal with multi-frame uh, multi failure by my supervisor, and to consider the effect of torsion by my colleague, um, to predict the response under cyclic bending by myself. And uh, there are many different other um, developments and extensions to this, uh, to this original method in uh, countries like Japan, uh, Korea, Portugal, Germany. And, uh, but the underpinning concept is the same as the original one. And uh, in the, my presentation, I, I only highlight our contribution at Newcastle University. And uh, because of the efficiency of this method, it is also incorporated in the uh, common structural rule uh, for the Hauke de Strand assessment. So it is now codified in our um, in the CSR. Because I couldn't find the image for the, uh, the, the the CSR for container ships, so I only use the CSR for bulk carriers and ore tankers. But I there's there should be a Another one for container ship, and I know the, uh, the the method that they recommend that they uh, re that they put in the CSR is the same as the one they recommend for bulk carriers and ore tankers. And uh, this this Smith method, simplified progressive method, collapse method, is essentially a further generalization of the elementary beam theory. Um, in this methodology, there are three assumptions. First is the beam assumption. The cross-section remains plain during the progressive collapse. That means we are dealing with a pure bending problem. We do not consider effect like whopping and shear lag. The second assumption is the interframe assumption. The failure only occurs at one frame stain. That means uh, there's no overall buckling uh, between two compartments, but uh, this is applicable for conventional ship types such as container ships, but in terms of our lightweight ships, uh, we need to uh, consider the overall buckling, and this has been um, resolved by, by my supervisor to deal with the multi-frame failure. Uh, the third assumption is the independent in independency assumption. There's no interaction between the adjacent structures. That means we can deal with the structural response of um, different structural elements uh, separately. And with all these assumptions, here is the overall calculation procedure uh, of the Smith method. First, we will subdivide the cross section into some structural elements um, like this into structural elements like stiffen panels element or hard corner element. Stiffen panel element means that we will consider the uh, buckling failure of the element. Hard corner element means uh, the behavior of a hard, hard corner element is uh, elastic, perfect, perfectly plastic. Those are normally elements at the intersect intersection between, um, between different plating. 
And the second step is uh, we will assign a load shortening curve to each structural element. This load shortening curve will uh, rep represents and characterizes the behavior of the structural element under in-plane compression and tension, which are induced from the overall bending of the half girder. Um, step one and step two are essentially some preparation. And the actual calculation is, um, the, is, by, is, do, is done by repeating step three to step A. Uh, we will first uh, evaluate the tangent stiffness uh, of each structural element at the present state using our low shortening curve. Essentially, we take the derivative of the low shortening curve, and the derivative of the low shortening curve is the tangent stiffness of our of that structural element. And we can, we can then calculate the precision of the um, instantaneous neutral axis of the cross section by using the uh, tangent, stiffness, tangent stiffness property of the elements. And then we can, since we now have uh, the tangent stiffness of all the elements, we can now evaluate the ba overall bending stiffness of the cross section with respect to the instantaneous neutral axis by using these relationships here. And now we have the bending, stif stif bending stiffness of the cross section. Uh, we can, so that means we have all these, uh, we know all these terms in the, in the matrix. So for a given curvature, uh, horizontal curvature and vertical bending curvature, we can uh, solve this equation to calculate the uh, bending moment increments. We are uh, do this calculation. We uh, do this calculation procedure incrementally, and finally we can get a bending moment curvature curve. And the peak of that curve is our ultimate ship house strength. Um, as I mentioned, I will also do some final element analysis to validate the simplified calculations. Uh, this is some of the uh, final element modeling techniques we usually adopt. Uh, to, to, to predict the ultimate strength of a ship power using finite element, we normally don't need a full ship model because it's almost impossible to, to complete the analysis. Instead, we will take a slice of the midship, um, and that is, in our case, in, this, in structural assessment uh, or how good a strength assessment, that should be uh, enough. We develop a knife bay midship cross section using uh, four no shell elements. The element size is, uh, is uh, roughly 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters. And one of the most crucial things in uh, collapse analysis uh, is to incorporate some initial distortion in our finite element model. Uh, we consider three different types of initial distortions local play uh, distortion, column type distortion, and stiffener side distortion. Another type of initial imperfection is the so-called welding induced residual stress, but we ignore the effect of the residual stress. Um, the reason is, is because it's quite difficult to incorporate residual stress in a how girder model. Uh, we could, but the thing is uh, when we uh, consider when we incorporate some residuals in the numerical model, it can uh, induce some numerical error in our numerical error and some uncertainties in the fine element analysis. And it turns out this actually is quite a common practice in, at least in academic world, to ignore the routing induced residual stress when it comes to hard data <laughs> analysis. And, uh, the damage affected zone, the damage zone is represented by removing all the relevant um, elements. That's how we represent the uh, damage zone, just remove the elements. These are some comparisons of the um, bending moment curvature curves between the simplified cal calculation and the finite element analysis. This one is the uh, result uh, of our Containership in sacking, and this one is showing the results in hogging. Uh, as we can see, uh, the, all the um, 
solid lines are the result are for intact ship and the dashed line are the result for the damaged ships. As we can see in case of sagging, after the peg value, there's still a very large strand we made uh, on the cross section on our container ship. But in hawking for an intact cross section, there's a relatively large reduction of the, uh, of the strength. But when it comes to damage, the behavior is similar to the behavior in second. That is some comments about the progressive collapse behavior of a container ship in sagging and hawking. You may find some uncertainty in the ultimate strength uh, prediction. Um, they are inevitable because there are uncertainties from the way we derive low shortening curve and the uncertainty of the way we calculate the overall Hawker the response. But if you look at this table and these two figures, we can see that there's a reasonably close agreement in terms of the strength reduction uh, between different methodologies. So that may give us some confidence um, to use the simplified calculation for, the, for predicting the residual ultimate strength. Then we do our safety margin evaluation uh, to compare the our ultimate procedure ultimate strength and the extreme design load level. Um, yeah, the safety margin is defined as the difference between the strand and the load over the uh, divided and then divided by the uh, extreme design bending moment. It is the sum of the maximum steel water bending moment and the maximum weight induced bending moment. Uh, you may find that the maximum uh, steel water bending moment occur at roughly 100 meters above the upper end perpendicular. Um, the, mesh, the, the steel water bending moment at the midship is slightly lower than the maximum value, but uh, we still use the, we, the maximum value instead of the midship value because that could uh, give us a more conservative uh, evaluation that means an improved safety margin. These bar charts show the uh, safety margin uh, of our container ship as a function of the vertical damage extent. This is the result for case one, this is the result for case two, and this is the result for case three. You can see that in case one, you may see that in case one, right from the beginning, even with a damage extent of 10%, <laughs> there's a very large reduction of the safety margin. And when the damage extent is uh, larger than roughly 50%, there might be an inact, uh, ma the safety margin is less, than, is less than zero. That means the ship is not safe, it's no longer safe. But in the case of case two and case three, even with a damage extent of as high as 70%, this ship is still very safe. The safety margin is still enough against the longitudinal bending. The main differences between uh, case one and case three and case three is that in case one, the, that the torsion box, the, the structure at the top is damaged from the beginning, but in case two and case three, the damaged uh, affected zone is propagated from the center or the lower lower deck. So that suggests uh, the torsion box, the structure at the at the top of the cross section is the key in terms of the overall strength of our ship hull. Here are the uh, residual strength index diagrams that we develop. Uh, we, the residual strength index is defined as the ratio between the residual ultimate strength over the uh, intact ultimate strength. Uh, we plot all these uh, index as a function of the uh, vertical damage extent. We think this could be, a <coughs> efficient, could be an efficient way to make a very fast estimation on the residual ultimate strength for our for the container ship of similar class 1000 TAU uh, under a given damage scenario.
just by interpolating the result presented in all these diagrams. Uh, you may further convert these diagrams into a set of empirical uh, regression formula. Some people do that, but we didn't. Finally is the conclusions. Uh, in this study, we uh, perform a parametric analysis to investigate the outcome strength performance of a damaged container ships uh, using the simplified progressive collapse method and also some validation by nonlinear binary element method. First, about the overall be collapse behavior of the ship, we can spy a sufficient strength still remains of the container ship in sagging, even if it fails. And the collapse of an intact container ship in Hawking experiences a gradual reduction of the post-collapse strength. However, it becomes similar, the behavior becomes similar to the second collapse behavior if um, the ship is damaged. And the torsion box of the container ship has a dominating influence on the residual ship hull strength if the torsion box is still intact. The hull girder of the container ship retains an adequate strength in comparison to the extreme design load, at least for our case study model. But on the other hand, the residual strength may be inadequate if the torsion box is damaged. And that is one of the uh, key findings and quite an interesting finding from this study. And we also developed some residual strength index, which could be a fast and fast way for some uh, strength assessments. And that's it for my presentation. Thank you very much.